This, in this video I'm going to show you how I heat treat D2 steel. It's a steel I really like working with. Um, it's uh, got a fairly high carbon content. It's not as stainless, but it's a lot more stain resistant than some of the other uh, high carbon steels um, outside of the realm of the stainless. Um, what I use to heat treat it because it's an air cooled or air quenched steel um, it needs to be heated in an oxygen free environment so to do that I use stainless steel foil you can see I've got one glove on uh, I'll put the other one on here in a minute it's a heavy stainless steel foil uh, this particular foil is rated for temperatures below I think it's 2000 degrees it might be 1900 uh, but I'm going to be heating it at uh, 1875 degrees I've got two of the knives wrapped already I need to cut one more piece um, just to show you, it just comes in a roll. Here's where I put the second glove on because I found out through experience you will cut yourself. And I just use a pair of heavy workshop scissors, uh, nothing fancy, to cut it. Get that box out of the way. And here's where I take off one of the gloves. I find it just a lot easier to work this way. Um, but again, it's sharp, so please be careful. And just fold it in half and put a crease in it. Move a little bit so you can see better. And then you want to crimp this edge or fold over this edge. You can do it a variety of ways, but I found if you use something like a, uh, I think these are for welding, uh, for folding sheet metal, works pretty good. You get it, can get a fairly clean edge. You just grab some. You don't need to grab a lot, and then just fold it over. flatten the seam that you did. I like to fold it at least three times. Just remember you want the uh, steel to heat up in an oxygen free environment. So there's once, Now on this edge there's not really anything sharp. The ends here are still sharp, so you want to be careful about it. I'm going to actually get rid of the second glove now. And again, flatten those out. This is just a handy tool to do it. Before I had this, I mean these are cheap pliers, but before I had this I was using a ball peen hammer just to flatten this edge. There's two. I just want to make sure I don't make the pocket so thin that the steel or the one knife won't fit in it. We're fine. I want to do it a third time. So now I've got this edge fairly well sealed. Now I want to do the same thing to the ends. One end though. I still have to get the knife in there. Just fold it over and pinch it. Do that three times. Now, as I've said a couple of times, I want to heat this in an oxygen free environment. A couple of schools of thought out there. I'm heating this to 1875 degrees. At 1875 degrees, there's not going to be any oxygen inside this envelope. Um, some people like to put paper or something that'll burn in there to remove, you know, it ignites at 400, 500, 600 degrees, whatever the temperature is, to ignite and remove the oxygen from in there. I kind of go with that school of thought, and here's why. If you don't seal this real good, then you you can see on your heat treat that it didn't come out quite right. And this is just 
cedar shavings um, just because I grab them from my wood pile. Again, these ends are sharp, be very careful. If I cut myself, I will edit it out. And I just put the cedar shavings in there, and I've done it both ways and gotten good results both ways, but it doesn't hurt anything doing this. And then I just slide it in, get the knife down to the end there, and then seal up this end. Feel the end of the knife. You don't want to hit that because it'll punch a hole in the steel or the stainless steel foil. And I have it. So this one's ready to go. Let me get the other three ready, and we'll be right back. This is the oven I'll be using. Well, that's the heat controller. I'll show you how I've got the program set up on this one. going to heat up as fast as it can to 1875 degrees and then when it gets there it's going to hold it for an hour. And I'm not going to start that just yet because I haven't put the knives in yet. And the reason I hold it there for an hour, this oven, which isn't a real big one, heats up very very slow. I've got a sheet of stainless on the bottom to protect the brick. Uh, but it heats up slow. When I'm heating to like 15 to 1600 degrees, yeah, it gets up there fairly quick. I say fairly quick, 45 minutes, 50 minutes. But to get to 1875 probably takes it an hour and a half. Um, it's not a real big oven, but it works. So I don't really need to soak the steel at temperature, but it's going to take me a while since I heat six blades at a time. To cool them off and I'll show you that set up after I get the blades started in there. What I use, I've got two different racks. This is a ceramic rack or made out of fire brick. Um, I don't use that one a whole lot. I'll set the knives in there to cool after I've taken them out. Um, this is just a piece of stainless plate, same stuff that I put in the bottom of the oven, that I just folded and uh, Cut some slots in it. It's the cheap man's knife holder. Now, when you're sticking something in there, I don't know if you can see it, those coils that are in there, um, you don't want your blade to touch the coil. You'll short it out. That's a bad thing. So, uh, let me get the blade set in there, show you what that looks like, and we'll get started. Okay, I've got all six blades in there. I guess I could have put a seventh in. I got seven. I have seven slots in that holder. But right, we'll shut the door. And go ahead and get started. All right, while the oven's heating up, I've set up my plates for quenching. This is just two piece, large pieces of angled aluminum uh, in a vise. Um, basically, you're going to stick the uh, blade between here. Within a few seconds, it's, it's cool enough to remove from there. Uh, then you just let it finish cooling the rest of the way before you take it out of the packet. This does a couple of things. It quenches it, cools it very fast. But it also, when you press on it, keeps the blade from warping, keeps it straight. So we'll be back uh, as soon as the oven heats up. Got a ways to go. And show you what that process looks like. All right, the oven's been at temperature for a while now. It's time to see what we got on the inside. Now here comes the balancing act. I mean, it's a lot easier if you've got aluminum plate and then you just put a heavy weight on it but that's not what I have or the room what I have room for so do this without dropping these on the ground and see what happens. I want to get them in there as quickly as I can 
I want to cool them fast, not slow. But I don't want these to fall as I do it. There's one. And that's good enough. I want to make sure that this plate doesn't get too hot because then I've got to let it cool off before I can uh, quench the uh, blades coming out. That's what, another reason I set my soak time for an hour. They've only been soaking for five or six minutes. But now I've got plenty of time to work with it without the oven shutting off. Yeah, I'm wearing gloves, but I mean, it's cooled enough to do that, where I could not do that before when it was 1,800 degrees. So let's grab another one. The final blade is in the press. Um, the oven is off. We'll let that cool down. I'll do the temper cycle tomorrow. And let's see what we got. Looks like a nice even uh, heat treat on it. And again, I'm going to temper these at 475 uh, just to get them a little bit harder. Thanks for watching.